Father, we thank you for our instructors that's in North Lundell, Austin, and Chatham, that you would just continue to encourage them and uplift them. And Father, we just thank you for the success of every program. And we call it forth now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The book of Proverbs, chapter number 16, verse number 3, states this. Whatever you do, give it unto God, and he will cause it to be successful. Amen. Amen. If you want to say something, please say that at the microphone so I can hear you well. Um, I, I don't think this needs to be. Okay. okay. All right. We have cake over there. Oh. And it's going to be cut. And before we cut it, I think it would be good for the graduates to, who are here to stand around and mm -hmm. keep, if you could, take a picture of us while the cake is still whole. <laughs> <laughs> and then we will go into our program. Not that we're going to cut it now, but I just want to make sure that there's a record of what the cake looks like. Without further ado, can we all gather around the cake? Everybody in the room, gather around the couch. And I guarantee you, this is not our last supper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, how are you? Good. Yep, yep, going good. Thank you, thank you. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, like that. It was on. It was on. It was on. Uh, 
my friend back there. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, that lady with the white hat, no way I'm going to miss her. I'm going to get in trouble. All 66 folks coming after me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one where she was like, I said, 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 I Amen. No, I had you. somebody you want to work with ever again. Mm. Uh, that, and I don't want to go down that tangent, I'm sorry. That, that's something for coaching. But at any rate, but without further ado, I want to bring you Mike Cannon. He is the founder, co-founder of Candor Enterprises. And he's going to tell you a little bit about his organization, what he does, his story, and if there's some time that he might give you some words of <laughs> All right, so let's hear it from Woo! Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Instrumental in the 
designing the re-entry system for our men and women coming back home, you would think uh, that you know, we have such a, a, a great system to incarcerate, but they have never had a coordinated system in place for when they come home after doing one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, the mass incarceration touches each and every one of us. I only have to ask you all, we have brothers, fathers, sisters, cousins, friends from my communities. We are all touched by it. So uh, my background is I am directly impacted. Uh, unfortunately, I served 29 years in the Illinois Department of Corrections. Um, during that time, uh, a lot of time to uh, reflect on myself and on life that I saw around me in the community. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to make myself better in my situation, the situation where I ate more health better. So I began uh, uh, preparing and developing programs. And uh, fortunately, uh, right before my release, I was released to Kiwani Life Schools Reentry Center. It was a new facility uh, that was put together to try to help us uh, get acclimated to, to uh, being back in society again. And they kind of let us spread our wings there where we were restricted everywhere else. So while there, oh, so, so while there, I was able to uh, help establish the first restorative justice program in the history of the Illinois Department of Corrections. I worked uh, heavily in workforce development, re-entry as a whole. And upon my release, that translated. Uh, I met a lot of important people coming through there. I established those relationships. I got with those people, and they ended up me being in this position as we entry navigator, navigator to design and implement the, the very system that I came out of. Right? So that was God right there. You know? uh, but my professional life leads into my personal life. You know, you know, during that time, there was a whole lot of praying, a whole lot of begging, and a whole lot of promising to create it. Because I wasn't promised to be here today, saying anything, speaking one breath of fresh air in 60 years since. Okay? Don't have a murder or anything like that. And it was found unconstitutional in 2000. The league is to say, I did all of that time and I came out intact. Okay? And that was a mix to do. Impossible. 
possible for us to do anything without uh, Valerie Lynn. Uh, so, you know, again, I could never thank you enough for that. And, and uh, so, uh, you all did the, the work uh, to improve the quality of life of individuals, families, and our community. Nobody is going to save us but us, right? Amen. Amen. And you all are the army, the boots on the ground, front line army. But let me say this, like uh, being involved uh, in a, a, a lot of uh, city, county, state, and federal zones and all that around grants and stuff like that, man, they really want or I personally know some of the state funders and they really want the money to come to our communities to reach those who are boots on the ground who aren't getting the funding but are really doing that the, the work that impacts the community as opposed to all of the big organizations that traditionally get all of that money but we don't see the changes that we like to see in our community that's why you all are here now and prepared and have your own visions about moving the needle forward and, and, and helping us. So they can't give the money if we, if, we, if we don't have the capacity to receive it or to dispense it or to operate. You all did that. You all did that successfully. So you all are on your way to having a successful organization. That far, this is just uh, the first step because it's a tedious process. Programming is tedious. Staffing, everything is tedious. I don't have to tell you all. So, man, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a uphill journey. It's a work in progress, and it always will be. But, man, it is very rewarding. Uh, I hope I did a little justice to uh, my story about uh, capacity building. Uh, I'm here to uh, answer any questions for you all uh, about anything I encountered along the way. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm still a scholar. I'm still going through uh, uh, capacity building a lot. It's, it's a lot. You know, but you have to have the business of your business support and know how to do it in order to be able to be all you can be and do all you can do for yourselves, the individuals, families, and community. So I want to keep you all long, uh, I'm passionate, but again, I thank you all for your passion, your preparation, the successful uh, completion of this program, and I look forward to uh, the work that you all are doing in the community, and I hope to uh, uh, be working with you all to uh, Save, help save the lives of the people in our communities. I thank you all, I love you all, and I hope to work with you all soon.
Yes. On earth, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. On earth. I want to make that clear. So, as a result, a direct result of that, you know, I said there has to be a way that we can train people who are actually doing the work on the front lines to be more competitive. And even if they never ever get a state grant, it's my hope that you'll be better off now that you spent a few days with us than you were when you got here, right? The goal was to develop leadership capacity, develop organizational capacity, learn how to develop your own programs, right? And do it in a way that is what we call evidence-based, you know, learning to use the language of the funder. And I, I like to tease Cecile. Cecile is trilingual. And that might, she, now she got four languages. Whoa. Spanish, black people, <laughs> <laughs> ivory tower, <laughs> and navigating the system. She is somebody who can bring it all Certificate, yeah, why they have a certificate. Are you kidding? 
some of you know some words about your experiences, and then you will come over here with your certificate. Again, take a picture, but you'll wait here instead of going off the stage. You're gonna wait here for the cohort, and then the cohort will take a picture. Does that make sense? Yes. All righty. So, without further ado, our first graduate from the North Lawndale cohort is Miss Pat Day McCray. Let's give her a big yeah. hand. So, wow. I thought the idea was staying here. That cost you. So, I'm here. I guess it is. All right, here we go. So, three of you, please. One, two, and one more. Mm -hmm. it, oh, one more, and I'll be done. Thank you very much. Okay, so right. yeah. Yeah. On this side for the plaque holder. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So again, my name is Patty McCray and my company is Okay. Mm -hmm. The mic doesn't want to just show Okay. Good morning. My name is Pat McCray. Again, my name is Pat McCray. And my company is a pathway from grief. I support mm -hmm. women who are dealing with grief after the loss of their children mm -hmm. as well as with parenting skills. Mm -hmm. So this complete experience has been very enlightening for me. I learned so much. I learned, learning is learning what you didn't know, right? I learned that I didn't know anything, right? So, uh, one of the main things that I got from this was the need to build collaborative relationships with other individuals, that you cannot do this by yourself, so you have to reach out to those who are like-minded, who are somewhat going in the same direction you are. I don't think it's necessary that they have to be going exactly where you are because I see life as a tree. There's a branch, there's an extension. So as long as you all have that same end destination, that same goal, that just collaborating with these people, bringing what you have to the table, looking at what they have to the table and how you guys could basically, I guess like, Seniors might say, make a really nice bowl of soup. So putting it together and making something that would be very tasteful for those that are in need. And not only tasteful, but very fulfilling. So my next step is just that, uh, that collaboration thing. I need to uh, identify who is that next person that I could and should be working with to help me get from where I am to where I want to be, as well as supporting them with where they are and where they want to be that we can serve the community. Thank you, my name is Pat McCray, and thank you. Yeah, we, we took the picture already, so that's what I'm saying. We'll do it on this side from now on. Okay. Okay, thank you. Got it. All right, thank you. I am the whole group. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. Alrighty, our next graduate is Annie Liddell, and as she makes her way up to the stage, Annie and I go back about, what, 20 years? I met her when I was running a small grants organization in North Lawndale. She was one of our grantees. She was extremely faithful then, and anybody who knows her knows she's faithful, well, faithful learn now, and if you could get more from faithful, she's always got on the spot. Now or? Yeah, after they talk, that's what we had talked about. So, okay. I didn't do this. Good morning. My name is Annie Liddell. I am the pastor of St. Paul Deliverance Center and executive director of St. Paul Community and Family Services. I was part of this uh, group and I'm so excited. I joined to, um, as Pat was saying, a lot of times we think we know things, but I knew in the beginning that I didn't know anything, so it was no surprise to me. But I think uh, one of the very important things is that we get to meet other people. We are called to do a work. 
and you cannot do the work on your own. The Bible says the, what is it, the laborers, the, what am I trying to say, y'all know? The harvest, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers, the laborers are few. Laborers are few. And so it's been my endeavor since I was a little girl to help the community, to help people. And I have been blessed with so many people in my life. As Valerie said, Valerie gave me my first grant. I didn't even know what a grant was. But because she had the heart and she had people working with her, I got my first grant, and it was a leadership grant. So I thank God for that. And all I have to say is I do, I, I really received a lot from this class just getting up. The one thing that I really did receive and I needed it was discipline. Mm. It was really hard every Tuesday morning getting up <laughs> and staying in that class for three hours. But because it was something that I wanted to do, Amen. I did it. Amen. And I appreciate everyone. And uh, one other thing. I learned there's no shortcut to That's success. Right. You've That's got right. to put in the work Amen. if you want to be successful. So my next step is to continue doing what I'm doing, I'll continue to working with my group, continue to uh, feed off of Valerie's wealth of knowledge, and that she's so willing to share. And my, uh, my uh, program was developing you. So you all, thank you all so much. Down the Did you take my picture? I guess. I'm not done. That's right. We just think of this. I'll give you an argument. We're going to want to do it. One more. And you're going to get one more thing. Thank you. All right. Our next person is Reverend Maddie Phillips. Reverend Phillips, when we were doing a capacity building project with a group of Oops. pastors, and she was one of the most engaged pastors in that group, yes. and I later learned that she's the pastor of one of my childhood friends, so there's a reason we get along so well. So Yay. First of all, I would like to say my name is uh, Maddie J. Phillips. I'm the Executive Director of Life Changing Family Services, and I will soon be stepping down as senior pastor and to move further into our community development. Uh, the main thing that I learned, uh, first of all, is that Valerie is someone that we all should know. Amen. And sometimes she teaches so well, I just want to put it in my pocket and take it. Uh, <laughs> take that's it. right. So I can pull up that knowledge. Gotcha. But the thing that I like, even when I preach, I like to prove my point. I just don't like to say things without proving it out. And Valerie gave us something uh, called the Ohio scale. It's like when you're saying what you're going to do with your organization, you have to prove that it has been proven. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, Googled that uh, Ohio scale, and I've been searching that, reading that, and it is pro proven out that what we want to do is uh, we can find some help in that particular area. And uh, our next step is that we were donated a home uh, kind of adjacent to our church. Uh, so we're re remodeling that and we're going to open up a women's re-entry home Amen. called Shelma House. Amen. Women with small children because uh, we do have, we do deal with uh, youth can see the gap between the parenting and the uh, uh, children. So we want to get women coming out of prison and have small children so we can do some parenting. Uh, we have a high school diploma program. Uh, we have a relationship with jobs, uh, employers that hire ex defendants So we want to get them ready to have sustainable um, employment as well as housing. So thank you, Valerie, for this time. And thank you to my classmates. And thanks for this uh, great opportunity. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
amazing experience with R3. And I will make sure that Christine gets her, gets her due. Our next person is Ruby Taylor. Woo! <laughs> about 20 years ago when I was working with small grants and she has always been faithful and, and she and I I believe went to the University of Illinois program together um, in their capacity building and all of that good stuff and yeah. Ruby is still tried and true oh did you need to we need to hug again <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah. Never miss a photo op. <laughs> all right, it's all yours. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. You know, I'm always pulling stuff down on my level. Hey, man. <laughs> uh, but it is such a, a, a pleasure to be here with you all. Yes. Uh, this has been such an awesome experience. Yes. Uh, Valerie, as others have already said, is an awesome instructor, coach, you name it. Yes. Um, about a year ago, maybe a couple years ago, um, I was uh, introduced to the AMP program to get some uh, consulting uh, services. And I didn't know who to choose. I was going through this long list, this list, this list. And then when I saw the name Valerie, I said, that, that's who I'm choosing. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, Valerie, yeah. for all of the knowledge that you imparted to us. Uh, we focus on violence prevention. Uh, for our project, we're already doing violence prevention work and we're using restorative justice as a means to bring people together to learn how to get along because we feel like if people learn how to get along yeah, yeah. and get to know each other, yeah. it cuts down on all the conflict and all that stuff and people learn how to work situations out together. So um, through the class, um, I was able to uh, learn more about capacity building in terms of uh, organizational skills and planning, strategic planning and, and evaluation planning and uh, more about grant writing, uh, just so many things. Um, so I, 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 just a wealth of knowledge. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my staff uh, also took the class uh, with, uh, uh, with me, uh, but he's, he's away. He's in Vegas, y'all. <laughs> so we gave him a, 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 a trip to Vegas for a Father's Day gift that he wasn't expecting. So other than that, he would have been here. But we learned so much. I brought my little car with me so I wouldn't go with the time, but I think I am already. But um, one of the things that we want to do, uh, well, several things we want to do. We want to, uh, as we've increased our skill and our knowledge, we want to put all that to work. Yes. And we want to go forth for that our uh, three funding, yes, but we also sure. want to use it to apply for various fundings as That's well. Right. And right. I, I'm so grateful to be amongst all of you and be connected with you. It's something about connecting with people in the community who have that same like passion that you do. Because yes. that's what's going to get the job done. Yes. That yes. passion that we have, when sometimes that paycheck is not enough, but we keep on doing what we're doing because we're doing it for our community, for the people who we love. Thank you all so much. Thank you. There's a future for Ruby and politics. <laughs> I believe so. I believe so. She's definitely a public servant. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just one more thing. I'm going to wave back with this lady, too. <laughs> yeah, this right lady. Yeah, Willie brought us all together because Willie was doing capacity building for the Stane Family Foundation. All right. And doing all this networking with different churches and grassroots groups. All right, our next person is Reverend Norma Tyson. All right. <laughs> I Sit in places and we're like, oh, I better not ask a question. People might think it's stupid. 
And then she'll ask the question, and then everybody learns from it, and it, it pulls our learning to a higher level. So thank you so much for bringing out the best in all of us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, I'm Pastor Norma Tyson of St. John Living Workers Church, and our organization is the St. John Youth Foundation. We are working with uh, youth development, and how we want to do that is through working with angry youth. Because mm -hmm. angry youth become angry adults. <laughs> and if we can catch them, if we don't save but a few, the world will be better. So we want to work with angry youth, giving them an outlet to channel out their anger through uh, poetry and through drama. And also teaching them something that they don't know that they need, how to handle their finances. And we want to uh, partner with some of the other people in our class and collaborate with uh, possibly Apostle Phillips and Pastor Liddell and anyone else that is willing to help us. And we're willing to work with you. And again, thank you, Ms. Valerie, for yes. such an awesome class. Amen. I came in and I admitted in the door, I don't know anything. <laughs> but I took a wealth of information from this class. Amen. Leadership, how to build your board, yes. how to get your organization known, how to prove that you're credible. Amen. And I thank Ms. Valerie for it. Anybody that you engage, please bring us a microphone for the camera and for the audio. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Would you all hear that in case I forget? Oh. Anybody who comes up here, make sure you speak into this mic. It's not going to amplify your voice for us, but it's going to make sure that you're picked up for the video. And I think that's really important. All righty. Edgar could not be here. Uh, that's the one who's in Vegas. Okay. And I'm going to find out what's going on in Vegas. He can't keep it. To what goes on in Vegas, man? Yeah. <laughs> we ain't going to let him keep it here. So. All right. Sherelle? Oh. <laughs> Last but not least is Sherelle. Yay. Sherelle. <laughs> Come, 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 come. I'm just trying to fill the space while you walk. Uh, Sherelle took full advantage of the program. Not only did she come on Tuesdays with us at Lawndale, she was on. Uh, she was in Tina's class she was for real. on Mondays. And Cecile. And Cecile. Oh my God! I didn't know about that. Cecile didn't tell me that. So, so she. You know, she was really, 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 I, I, I wish we could give you, what, three stars, but, <laughs> but go ahead. Um, oh, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Um, my name is Sherelle Withers. Um, I do with this. I'm still trying to find a connection. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, this class, um, you know, I've been listening today that everybody said that they came in with no knowledge. I can't say that. Um, I'm an urban planner. I've done some different things. I've done a lot of different grants. Been in the midnight hour, waiting with work, sweating with um, different nonprofit individuals, for profit individuals, trying to get the thing over the hump, right? Mm -hmm. But what this class did was, it's like you know a thing, right? You know how to do like the piece of the thing. So if you got one through ten, you know how to do really two well. You know how to do four well. You know how to do all these different things. But what it doesn't do, what you know, doing it in a piecemeal way or having knowledge in a piecemeal way doesn't allow you to have this painting of a picture, connecting of the dots that then allows for you to tell the story that then conveys your true impact. And that's what this class did. The approach that Valerie does, the approach that Cecile um, has, and the approach that Tina has, all of them give you the ability and not just give you this is the knowledge these are the points that you need to know these are the things that you need to know but they give you the why and mm -hmm. not and then not just the first why but the real real why <laughs> all the different the black people why the, all the different why <laughs> the, 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 the things that the, the people are looking for 
and then how not to get tripped up and um, getting trying to answer more than what the question is asking for. Um, and so that is very, you know, very key, especially for people who, like myself, who overthink, who think about everything to the point of ad nauseum, and then you then wrote a whole dissertation for something that asked for uh, 32 words. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you how we get along? <laughs> it's, uh, then, you, then you see you lament about how to edit it down. And like, so anyway, this gave you the perspective. And so I'm so very happy to have met all the people in my class and then even, um, you know, kind of connected to the people in these other classes in Austin and in Englewood. Um, and I'm really just so heartened that everybody here, because this was a true commitment. Who was that was talking about? Every Tuesday or every every time you had to be here, and that was the discipline. I truly, truly like this, but um, in in the sense of like being committed to keep doing something um, all the time. But again, and if you feel like it's valuable, you're going to put the time into it, even if it can't make the one that you're going to do that you're supposed to go to. You're going to go to another one. Um, Make sure I get my points because I'm doing like Ruby said, um, going off the script. Uh, um, so yeah, I learned a lot, and I definitely learned how to connect those dots um, way that can really can convey the thing. So my organization is Foundations to Futures Community Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. I started it in honor of my mom, uh, who not. So recent, just recently passed, and she was the one who put community in me. Mm. She created the, before it was called the community school, she created the community school. She mm. was the PTA person. She created the PTA and was going to those meetings and finding out that we didn't have the resources that other schools did. Mm. And so she worked with the, the principal of the school <coughs> to have the school open every day of the week mm. until 9 o'clock at night. Wow. And that was not only to serve or to and the families there, but also the greater community. So she turned Melody, the original Melody, not the original Melody, um, into a community resource center that people can really get things that they can do to be more stable in their life. And that's what I want to carry forward with Foundation of the Futures and making sure that we have a family stabilization component. But, uh, so one of the things in, in terms of uh, the families, okay. Uh, so, focusing <laughs> on you and the violence, and then somebody said when people are angry and they don't have what they need and they don't have housing, mm -hmm. they start to act out in violence. Um, that being said, thank you very much. Over here. Oh, okay. Slide down with it.
here to acknowledge the graduates of the Austin community. And being here today as the Austin Community R3 instructor is an honor and a privilege. For more than 15 weeks straight, plus several weeks last November, we have met at 5650 West, Walk West Madison and at the Austin Community Library. Uh, to work through various lessons that would help strengthen our graduates as individuals and help them build capacity uh, for some of the organizations while being the launch pads for the newbies, for the new organizations to come. And so since this time uh, of being together, each one of our graduates collaborated on a few projects have uh, worked together uh, at community uh, community events. Yes. <laughs> and so that's part of the requirement of R3, that you work together to build synergy in the community, thus produ producing greater results. And since our beginnings, I've had the opportunity to learn more about our graduates and their passion for serving the next, uh, for serving the community and uh, moving through this, the courses of exercise that we completed together collectively. Our time together is not over. Mm -hmm. so you've heard that reverberated over and over again. So today is uh, one of the milestones and I'm looking forward to helping each and every one of you all accomplish the next. And so now I'm going to call up our graduates. First, we're going to start with Angela Bynum. And I'm going to allow them to share um, a little more about what their passion is and their org the organization that they're working with. <laughs> Microphone. That's me. Hi, my name is Angela um, Bynum. Hey. I'm from Total Relaxation um, Beauty and Arts um, Foundation. Um, I'm here because of uh, Tina. I met her over the phone. I was looking for grants <laughs> and some more community work for me and my son. And she invited me to the class, and it's been just a pleasure ever since. Um, I met Valerie. Um, I met a few other leaders that's around the R3 program. I'm so excited um, to start this program. <laughs> I'm nervous too, y'all. Take your time. Doing um, good. Great cool. You are. I shouldn't be around some of the people that I meet now because of some of the things that I went through, but. Look at God again. Yes. I meet women yes. I meet people that I never would have met, or even if I wouldn't have never came into this class, not on the street. And I am so blessed to know all of you all. Audrey, <laughs> um, what I learned, I learned a lot. It's nothing that I knew before I came to this class. I, I ran my business for 35 years, that's what I did. But what I didn't realize, I was doing nonprofit work on the side. And so now I'm glad I'm here mm -hmm. so that I can successfully do it because they gave me a tool, the tools to do it. It's a big old belt that I got now That's that right. I'm wearing. You Come can't on, see it. Yeah. And I just want to thank God because it's people that I meet, or I have met. That's going to meet, help me meet my needs, and I hope I help them meet their needs. Yes. You know, I'm beauty. That's what I come from, and that's what I'm going to bring to the table. Um, a lot of education, a lot of um, mental illness, um, addressing um, housing, an issue that I had, um, addressing some of the things that I, I did have and some of the things that I didn't have. And um, what I learned also is that we're better together, or we get better together. Yeah, man. And um, what I'm going to do now is take what I learned in this two bed of mine mm -hmm. and apply it. Boots on the grounds, building my capacity, building everything that I need to take with me to my next level. I am so pleased to 
work here, I mean, you know, be under R3 so that I can prove myself. I finally get a space where I can prove myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm fun, and I have a lot of fun, but I'm serious. <laughs> and I thank God. Amen. Amen. Move over by the sign. Thanks, Mr. Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm Georgetta Davis. Um, I'm going to say up front, I'm better talking in my seat than I am at the podium. I'm the one that interrupts class on <laughs> interjecting with some whatever, you know, thinking for other people. But anyway, let me get on with I had a few things I wanted to say. First of all, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I've only been five months out of retirement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm old. I did 20 years in corporate and 20 years in education. Ooh. So being in this class helped me bring all that together. Yeah. And uh, one, or, one of my organization is a consulting firm. It's a for-profit. And then I decided I was going to do a non-for-profit. And I kind of just kind of merged the two together. Because when we talk about capacity building, the same thing goes for like each one of our organizations in the consulting. You need to know both sides, non-for-profit and the for-profit side, in order to be successful. And so I've had, I've had other businesses too. But this is what I'm seeking to do now. And um, I, uh, our, my organization, the name is Eminent. The uh, for profit is Eminent. It is Eminent group, uh, group Consultants, and the other one is Eminent Life Careers. Mm -hmm. And I do merge both of them because Group Consultant is a training company, and I see that the capacity building has to do with technology and everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get caught up in the work, but we don't realize that we're not fortifying ourselves in our capacity to continue to work and be appealing to the people that might be interested in working with us. Mm -hmm. And the other side is uh, mental health. I'm a licensed clinician. Uh, I was a clinician in the school system for 15 years. And so I merged that with my career development, which is getting students or young people from 14 to 24 to understand what a career is, not just a job. Mm -hmm. but a career, mm -hmm. and you have to be certified to do that. So the people on my staff, they are certified, master level certified career development uh, wow. uh, people. <coughs> and also, um, I um, do, do a sports program. But you know how they say, uh, you know how they have that organization, Jack and Jill, and they're real funny acting? <laughs> <laughs> but they have a concept that our students, our children need yes. to understand, to bring them to the service the next level. Because yes. you can be an attorney, but you didn't leave together. So that don't help your career any, but there are sports and there mm -hmm. are things that they can get training at this age that will put them in the room with people and they will know how to respond in that. So I have that kind of program too. I merge that with the mental health because work is mental health. Mm -hmm. And so I do the workforce development part too. Amen. All right. So that's my, those are my two organizations. And I just appreciate being here and I appreciate meeting everybody because I'm so new to NUM. I just retired four months, five months ago, okay? So NUM for profit and being in that arena with the, all of you all was a leap for me because I had to kind of slow myself down and maybe develop the mindset yeah. or the pace that it goes at and the people and their passion and how they operate. So. It was a real big leap for me, but I appreciate the opportunity. I'm growing, and I want to say thank you uh, to um, Valerie and Tina for the opportunity.
Uh, our next person is Leanne Elin. She was not able to make it. Her, she had a death in the family, so we're def uh, definitely going to keep her in our minds. Or in our mind, on our minds. Yes. Um, we also have Yolanda Evans, who's here today.
This is the Friendship Baptist Church. I'm a member here. I've been a member here for over 35 years, awesome. and uh, and I love my home church. Amen. And uh, I, before I fell asleep last night, I, I had this the Holy Spirit put it on my heart to write four or five pages of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I heard Val reiterate before we started, one and one half minutes. <laughs> so, so I've, I've, been, I've been trying to I've been trying to pare it down. So I'll just I just want to say a few things. Um, I learned, and I think Pat Pat said it best first. What I didn't know. Uh, we have a very small organization called the South Austin Neighborhood Association, and uh, I'm on the board. And um, we got involved with Austin coming together, uh, creating the. Uh, the, um, the quality of life plan. Thank you. And we worked on uh, changing the community narrative. How do you perceive Austin? And so that's what we worked on. And so we have a garden that we established uh, uh, in Austin. And so we started with nothing. And uh, of course we knew about grants. You know, that's, that's like saying, I know about Jesus. But you got to know Jesus. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. you know, not about him, you got to know him. And so we knew about grants, but really didn't know the road, the route to take what we needed in order to get the funding to do what we did. And uh, so we begged, borrowed, didn't steal, begged and borrowed. Uh, we talked to our aldermen, we talked to an organization called Neighbor Space, and we were able to get this plot of land, and we were able to get. Um, some plants and different things in the garden. So I hope, hopefully, it's right across the street from MacArthur's. One day you'll get a chance to come by and see it. But um, it's what I didn't know. I didn't know that there was a, such a thing as capacity building. I didn't know that you needed to have a strong board. You know, I didn't know that you could get funding for things like, you know, computers and things like that. So, but when you have a passion for something. Amen. You find a way. The Lord will make a way when you have a passion for something. So people came to our aid. We dug in our pockets. Other people came to our aid. We collaborated with people, and we made it happen. And we want to make more things happen. Yeah. And that's why a class like R3, the class that Tina and Valerie and Miss Cecile uh, put on these last several months is so valuable, just, just invaluable, I guess, is is the correct word. And so I'm really thankful and grateful for everything that they taught us this week. And I'm just going to say one more thing and I'll be done. You know, when I wrote this, this five-page dissertation or whatever you want to call it, I put, uh, how important is the dash? It's going to sound kind of morbid, so bear with me. You got your name, you got your date of birth, you got the dash, and then you got the end date. What are you doing with your dash? Yeah. What are you doing with your dad? Preach. That's what the Lord is looking at. And all these people in this room, these core people who hung in there for months and months and months, I see what you're doing with your dad. Thank you. So you always need to pass the table. That's what so, 
somebody, somebody, everybody already said what I wanted to say. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, I said, um, Tina allowed us to come up here and talk about what our passion is for the work, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm um, humbled by, by the passion that we have here. Um, yes. I wish I could say I, I have the same passion. I just, I do it because I'm tired. You know? <laughs> I'm tired, like, um, I'm tired of waking up with the anxieties of having survived state violence. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of being the political football. You know, I'm tired of, 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 of burying our youth, you know, and, 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 and embarrassed by my part in, in all of this. Um, so, just a little background. Um, I work for the Prison Neighborhoods Arm Education Project. Um, we teach inside state of prison. Uh, um, it started as a just art project, right? We're going to teach art. Now it's a degree granting program mm. for uh, folks inside and for folks coming home. Um, in, in this endeavor, we, we, we created community events where we invite the families of the incarcerated and they build networks that, that um, allow them not to be uh, uh, outcasts when you're youth, right? Because when you're at school, you know, Father's Day, your father's not there. It's even harder when your mother's not there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when, when they're in these spaces, they're not outcasts. You know, they, they, they get to build networks. And uh, what we're doing now is we're opening up a art gallery space that doubles as a community center where we hope to invite audience there, right? Because one of the things I learned in my research is that um, we need space, right? We need space. I've been trying to find space. I'm in the Austin. Uh, network, but I've been trying to find space for the last two years, mm -hmm. and I'm just finding out what the disinvestment looks like on the west side. <laughs> the year, the, the the wait for finding a space a space on the west side is three to ten years, mm -hmm. right? And, and I look on the news, and there's all kind of talk about the violence on the west side. Nobody's talking about the disinvestment on the west side, right. you know. So. Um, I want to get on another point on this. I am a R3 board member. Uh, I jump onto this uh, uh, opportunity because when I get involved in something, I get in on the ground, right? I go down there and get dirty and see what's going on. So when I came, when I heard about the process and why people weren't putting our uh, applications in, I wanted to see why. When we were going through the process of making it more accessible for folks. I was seeing the different hurdles of, of the red tape, and so I wanted to come out here and see, you know, what what is the all the the, the, the barriers so that I can go back to the board and then you know, try to create something that makes it more accessible and more equitable. Because I went through this process, and there's still a whole lot more for me to do. A whole lot more for me. I wish I could go through this three more times, right. you know, so that I could keep going. I, I should have went to more classes, but you know what? There's always one more person involved. There's always one more thing, and, 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 um, and there's one more bike ride that you want to attend, one more event, and, and what I found out is that there's only one of me, Amen. and I only have two hands, so I, what I try to do is empower people, right? I organize around uh, uh, issues of incarceration, higher education, uh, uh, but what we're trying to do right now is bring about healing. Um, our students. I know a lot of folks have heard the, the, the saying that hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. I've heard one of our students inside say, so long as there are hurt people, nobody is safe. Wow. Right? So we, one of the things we want to start focusing on is getting away from this people versus adversarial system and bringing it home to where we're looking at healing each other as opposed to trying to hold some kind of accountability that only works to provide somebody some capital and, and at, at, the, at, the, at the blood and sacrifice of all the people who are in here and all the people who look like us. So I'm gonna just say thank you to Tina who did an excellent job. And, and like it doesn't escape me the, the, the material that is being provided to us. Yes, right, awesome. right, the cost that it would that it would take for us to get there, and that is one bridge that was removed for us. Yes. And we, I hope they removed for others. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
after you done worked all day. Let me tell you how I feel. I was telling this team this a um, couple of weeks ago. It's like, I come home, I do everything I need to do. I'll have a board meeting with my, my board and then go into this meeting with Miss Tina and um, my cohort. Halfway through when we have our break, I'm running up in the shower, get myself together for work, put my, you know, scarf on a bonnet or whatever, and I go right back to the class. I just turn the camera off because I don't want you guys to be <laughs> crazy, but I, I had to pivot. And pivoting is what's going on in our community. We have to pivot and make things work for our youth, make things work for our people. You know, it, it's just a commitment, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Um, the last thing I want to say is I gained so much knowledge from my cohort. Um, just learning life experiences from everyone that's on uh, the zone with us every week. I learned so many different things, and I'm quite sure that they learn different things from me as well. That's how you grow. That's how you learn. Amen. And I thank everybody for being here, especially my daughter and my, my two grandsons. So that's a part of the, the cohort, too, because <laughs> they're my office assistants. And um, I know it's been plenty of times I had to turn the mic off because those two they were doing what they was doing. But, I thank you all. I appreciate it. And again, Ms. Tina, Ms. Valley, Ms. Cecile, the, the work that you guys have been doing is amazing. And I thank you.
Um, nice. Moving on to what I do now. The organization that, um, that I have is called Beyond Ace Place. Beyond Ace Place may sound a little bit funny to some people because I'm a live person and I named it after myself, but not really. Pega, Parents and Children with Asthma, it was a part of what I was for so many years. So we still do asthma support, but not as far as a business is concerned. We just do it to help one another. Beyond this place is an umbrella of everything that I've done. See, a lot of times people do things, build things up, plant seeds, and then you want to toss them away and erase them and don't want other people to know this is what they did. Thanks to my mother who invested in everything that I did, Ms. Joan Watkins, um, retired social worker, her friend, um, Mrs. Gay, who is also our daughter's uh, godmother, is here today. My husband, Edwin Whitfield, my IT uh, genius tech <laughs> engineer. Um, Tina, thank you. Um, and Valerie, I, I met them over 20 years ago. So a lot of people that I know I've met for a long time. I'm sorry I'm going over that one and a half minutes, but there's a reason for it. <clears throat> Under PECA, I was able to partner with other organizations and individuals, and we came right here. For those of you that didn't know, we were right here. This is where we had the first meetings for the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, better known as Obamacare, ACA. Oh. In the Austin community. And that was with my group, Taker. Um, we did so much. I fought hard to save Austin High School. All those times they tried to shut it down. The last time I was involved and I was allowed to be involved, thanks to, um, to Mayor Daly and the architects and engineering firm that was in place, my husband and I for three years worked with them to maintain the maroon and white all in the school. It used to be maroon and white in the community. But that maroon and white gives the alumni the reason to come back. So what, what, uh, what, what we do, okay, I'm going to wind it up. So with Deyande's Place, I've combined everything that I've done so that me being disabled now is not invisible. I'm not invisible. I'm visible, and I'm going to have the disability organization working with me so that I can be heard. So my shirt. Our granddaughter made it for us. Juneteenth Peace Walk. I was the first person that I knew about to come to the Austin community and educate people and have programs about Juneteenth. I have records of it. That's what I do. Um, so therefore, when it came time to the background of making Juneteenth a national holiday, I was that invisible, behind-the-scenes person helping to make Juneteenth as a national holiday. So this is, um, I draw these things through Deandre's place, and um, I'm just looking forward to um, being able to work with you all as we continue on this journey of life. Thank you. Uh, if we can go at an angle, you can get that.
that, but I started changing noises because I found there was a need for um, parents that lacked um, a high school diploma. There were a lot of students that were in school, but the parents didn't have a high school education. So they pushed their kids really hard so they wouldn't wind up to be just a statistic and just having to work and not have a degree. So um, I find myself trying to figure out how was I going to get out the four walls of CPS. So I started checking on ACES, and from there I grew it um, for the past, I want to say, 15 years. When I started out my organization, I knew nothing about grant writing. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even win a grant. <laughs> I would pay people to help me with this, and um, I just started working on various things with my organization. But my main focus was how can I help parents with literacy? How can I help? How can I help single moms uh, with housing? It was a lot. It was a lot of things that I did as a, a teacher and as a community person here. Um, grew up right here at the La Follette Park, and um, it's just been a wonderful experience. So right now, I just want to be able to say, Change you know, Aces has won a grant. And it was so much that I've learned um, from losing to now I'm winning. Oh, um, yes. and, yeah. Yeah. The grant that denied me um, a couple of years ago, R3, um, one of my friends just told me she just won a grant with R3 with my help. So I thank Tina as well as Valerie for like the help and support and just gaining the knowledge and having other um, sisters and brothers that I gained from just coming to the Mondays with my lace cell with my coffee um, because I still I'm running an organization right now um, with opera and we're going through an audit so I just want you all thank you guys just for the help and the support and um, having a community is very important because you cannot do this alone Amen. so that's all I have to say and thank you so much opportunity to have this deep dive around nonprofit capacity for the Inglewood groups 
And I think all of the, the communities that are represented here will have the same sentiment. You see so many groups who are not boots on the ground in our communities receive so many dollars. Mm -hmm. And so what was important for me to facilitate an initiative like this, especially for Inglewood, is that in order for us to be more impactful, we need our grassroots groups that have intention and passion and have integrity to be leading the work in our communities. And a lot of times we can't be at the, the grant making table because we don't know how to write those grants or to do the, the work of building the capacity to apply for them. The last piece that I'll say, and then we'll start with the awards for Inglewood, is that um, I think one of the things you all have all said, and that, that I hope in the teaching that we did in Inglewood is clear, is that you can have the consultant help you with accounting and the grant writing and everything like that, but it is so important for you to know how to run yep. your organization, yep. right? Um, you can bring that accountant on, you can bring that grant writer on, but if you don't know how to supervise them and making sure that they're doing the right thing, you can get taken advantage of or it won't be the way you want it to be seen for the funders and for the larger community. So the, at, the, at the end of the day, it's like make sure you get the information for yourself so that you can always lead your organization. Don't okay. never have nobody on there that knows more about what's going on I in the organization right. than you, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Oprah. <laughs> so for um, our first awardee, Ms. Deborah Clay, she couldn't be here. She runs a church daycare called Camp 1302. So let's give it up for Ms. Deborah Taylor. <laughs> Mr. Wilbur Cook, we borrowed him from North Mondale. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be here today, but let's give a round of applause for Mr. Cook. Ms. Barbara Graham, she runs Hey Benji Foundation, has a, an amazing book on Amazon for teaching young people how to navigate the city of Chicago yeah. as a tourist. So check her out on Amazon. She does programming on Saturday, so she couldn't be here, but let's give a round of applause. Yeah. All right, well, please come to the stage. Mr. Griffin, Mr. Ken Griffin. Woo! So Ken is a police officer during the day, and he is still coming to all of the classes and runs amazing programming for young people in Greater Inglewood. Beautiful. Come on, Ken, why don't you share a little bit about the work you do? Uh, thank you so much, Cecilia. Um, so I don't like to talk at all. So that minute and a half, you're going to get probably less than that. But um, I, I just want to thank Cecilia and Nicole for this. Um, for me, um, and I, I made a quick note. Um, Frederick Douglass, he said that um, it's easier to build stronger children than it is to repair broken men. Mm, wow. And so for myself, um, mm. I started my nonprofit um, about five or six years ago. Um, the name of it is No Matter What, as you can see on my shirt. Um, and the idea behind No Matter What is that a lot of our young people go through stuff that they shouldn't have to go through, um, but have a will to succeed no matter what. And so what we do is we invest in them through job readiness, training, mentorship, and mental health healing, with a strong emphasis on helping them reach their highest potential no matter what they go through. Um, I can say a whole lot of stuff about, <laughs> about what I do or what I've learned during the classes that we've been doing since November. Mm -hmm. um, but you all said it all, so you all know the amazing things that we um, got to learn. I will say most importantly for myself, uh, from Cecile, um, I learned uh, the ability to be confident. And we know, you know, a lot of us are doing this work, but we're scared of we're scared Amen. of the logistics, we're Amen. scared of the uh, yes. the language, we're scared of different things. And when we were doing these different activities, um, I'll sit down with my head down, <laughs> and I'll try to go last. I'll be like, you know, let them go first because I wouldn't know what I was doing. But um, and then when I go up there and I do the activity on the board, um, Cecile was like, "What are you talking about? You got like that's amazing. You don't even need help with that." And I was like. Yeah, but it's, it's then I would, you know, I would be so hard on myself and I just learned that, you know, sometimes, sometimes people, sometimes people see things in you that you don't see in yourself um, until they're able to speak on it. So I learned so much and um, I'm truly confident. One of the things that kind of hurt my feelings a lot, um, looking around this room and different rooms that I've been in is there are no men. Mm. Um, and I don't know if it's because we don't you know, like to be seen or we don't like the logistics. I know for myself, um, I'd rather be on the ground doing the work. I don't like paperwork. I don't like application. I don't like none of that. And I know for you know, a lot of us men, we're like that. And um, women, you all are, are way more organized than us. And you all you know, take you know, better care of certain things. But uh, for myself, being a man and being a police officer at that, 
Uh, I recognize that that these young people need love. They need uh, more men to show them yes. that yes. we yes. love them. Yes. And so um, I'm grateful for this. That probably, I, I talk way more than I thought I would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I I'm excited. But uh, what's next for no matter what? So um, June, July 16th, we have a summer camp that we host. We take 30 to 50 kids to Woodstock, Illinois, yes. wow. uh, for a week. So uh, I have my card. If you all have any kids between 14 and 18, uh, we got about 10 more spots, maybe a little bit more spots available if y'all want to maybe send y'all kids to summer camp for a week. We teach them culinary arts and we teach them different uh, trades. Uh, we also have a cohort every year we take out of the country, so we help them get their passport. Um, wow. I believe the exposure is everything for our kids. Yes. Um, a lot of our kids think Indiana is out of town. That's not out of town for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so this year we're taking uh, 15 kids. We're taking to Ireland. Uh, there's, I didn't know this, but there's a there's a place in Ireland that has a lot of minority um, Irish people, which is like I've not heard of. But um, that's, that's happening this year. Next year we're going to Italy. So I always wow. want people, you know, when that application come up. Um, and then lastly, I'm done. <laughs> We we are we just received a building from uh, Cook County Land Bank for free. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. Awesome. We're taking that building and we turn it into um, it was a building that kids I mean honest kids was committing crimes in and now we're gonna turn it into a building that uh, young people can do youth programming. Yes. Today, we are, thank you for our ancestors, but we are not the grandmas that's sitting on the porch rocking with Afghans anymore. All right? And my organization tried to find resources from dating to death. Oh. Okay, we still rock. Okay? But let me behave, my son is out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as Cecile told you my story, I did come to her and I was like, oh. she's like, I got something for you, I got you, just hold on. This is what you need to do. And I was so thankful for everything that they did for me beyond uh, just going to the Zoom meetings. And I'm not as advanced as technology and I'm not for looking at a screen. She also provided hard copies for me to read so yeah. I could write and check off and yeah. give her a thousand and one questions <laughs> to be answered. And so, as all of us have stated, that I like to think about the tool belt because yes. that's what I wore about 32 years by pulling cable and 
installing lines and stuff for the telephone company so I can relate to a tool belt real good. <laughs> and, uh, and all the tools that y'all have stated, I'm going to put in my tool belt and I'm going to work with it. <laughs> okay. And with that note, um, my next steps is just creating a safe space and activities, creating ways of communication and information, social participation, ways the community can support and health services, campaign to celebrating life. All right, my thing I got a little upset with was you used us for the poster child of the pandemic. Now what you doing with us? Mm. Uh -oh. That kind of took me for a thing there, okay? You, then after you used us for the pandemic, you use this for a vote with chicken wings in a logo bag. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, I'll get right on with it. Okay? <laughs> so, but my thing is, I got to teach them and turn it around and tell them, this is what we want or it's not going to happen again. Yeah, that's right. Okay? That's right. And the biggest thing, well, I'm doing a thing with Rush Hospital, uh, creating Inglewood as a dementia village. Ooh. Oh wow! And but the big, the bigger, bigger thing is September 29th when we host our senior empowerment summit at Kennedy King. Uh -oh. Oh, and wow. so I invite all the seniors to come. Let us know if you want to be a vendor, sponsor, or just want to come through. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cecile. Thank you, Valerie. I love you. You know that, right? Yes. I, that's why she's my superhero. I told you all. <laughs>
Oh, you got some more? Yeah, you got it. Well, why would we wear that just going to say a little grace over the hoop that we can have? Okay. 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 So, first of all, on behalf of Beat Friendship Baptist Church, we'd like to thank you all for coming and participating today at our lovely church. Thank you so much. And uh, we want to ask that the Lord be kind enough to bless the food that we're about to receive. So uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for the food that we're about to receive and for the hands that are prepared and for the hands that are going to serve. And we ask it to be your will today, Heavenly Father, that you will give each of us the desires of our heart. That's my prayer, in God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Miss Tick, Miss Tick, Miss Yeah, 